Hey YouTube, this is going to be a bit of a weird one and a bit of a boring one to be honest. Um, a little while ago I messed around with one of these Plankton uh, PLA substitutes for Commodore 64 and they're great and they work brilliant and excellent. <clears throat> and then I watched a video from Gadget UK where he made a uh, PLA replacement out of a one time programmable chip. And that chip is an AT27C512R45 nanosecond chip. So. I watched this video, I thought, well, that'd be interesting, I'll try and make one and see if it works. So I actually made two of them. I made one using two sockets and some wires, which is exactly how he shows you in his video. Um, these are capacitors that I basically um, bodged together to get, I think, 84 picofarads on each one, which <clears throat> on the original board I tested seemed to be the best uh, value. And what that's doing is it's basically delaying one of the lines for the apparently the CAS RAM. Anyway, watch Gadget UK's video, much more informative than mine. I'm not going to cover how I did this. Watch his video, he, he covers it all there. Um, <clears throat> this is just going to be me testing these on my five Commodore 64s. Now, I'm not saying I suggest using these, I'm not saying I don't suggest using these. Opinions are mixed on whether it's a good idea or not. This is just literally me going through my collection and trying these on all my boards. One two three four five what i'm going to do i'm going to put the uh, uh diagnostic through it and then i'm going to run a game r type i'm going to give you the board revision and it's going to have in it that three two one and here we are off quiet please and indeed there we are I'll count five so that is one of these eprom plas this board is a 250407 Rev C. Okay, so this is a 250407 Rev B that I fixed a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Um, 250407 Rev B. There's our substitute PLA on a socket, on a socket, on a socket. And uh, let's see if that works. One, two, three, go. I'm going to bore you with this. I'm going to come back after five runs. And as you can see, count five passed. Rev B. Moody chip. This is an earlier board. It's a 250407 Rev A. And there's our buzz job. Let's see what happens. Excitement is palpable. Aha! Uh -huh. I'll check the connections and run it again. Oh, now it works. Bad. Okay, so it doesn't work. So this was the one with the Moody CPU. The Moody CPU will run the diagnostics fine, so it's back in there. I'm waiting on a new CPU. I'm just testing whether it was the um, connection to the socket that was the issue or whether it was the PLA. The revision is 251137RIFB. Now I've got one that works. Let's see if this one works. And that's what it was doing before. It will pass the RAM test, or it says it will, but we're getting those artifacts. And there we go, bad. Okay, so this is my go-to 64. This is a 250425. And in the interest of science, I have socketed the PLA. This is the same one, I think, that Gadget UK used on his one. So I'm hoping this is gonna work. I'll just turn it on. So it doesn't look like that's gonna work. Uh, I've got that weird character in the top of the screen there. Doesn't look good. Quickly test our type. It seems to work. Just on the old left hand here. Yeah. Seems to work. On the 250425, although I get a weird diagnostics. I'm not going to read too much into that Moody Diagnostic uh, diagnosis because that is the proper PLA. If I turn it off, sometimes it works. Turn it off, turn it on again. And it goes. 
so there's something flaky on this machine anyway I think um, I don't know what that could be but even when it does complete it it just hangs and then it just gets stuck Okay, at the risk of pouring him onto tears and tearing the absolute arse out of it, it's now got the plankton in it, so I'll give it a test with that and uh, see if it's any different. And then I promise I'll pack it in. And it's giving me exactly the same crap. So, yeah, I'm going to conclude from that not to read too much in. I bet it does do the sound test, but the other one wouldn't do the sound test. It's so just to completely labour the point. I've now put the PLA from a known good machine that passes the diagnostic tests, um, a real PLA, into this machine, the 425 revision, which was the one that showed up not working very well with the uh, substitute, and it, it gives me the same thing it hangs. So there's something with this board, it might be the fact that I've put a Carlson saver on it internally, it's not real Carlson saver, it's my one. Check the switch, I've recapped that one, and um, We'll have a look at these regulators, but yeah, I know it's not the PLA now. Just one uh, thing to watch out for on these 425 boards. PLA and the sitter switched. Easy thing to fall for. I haven't, but uh, yeah, easy thing to fall for. So where does our unscientific little test leave us? I've drawn up a little sheet here. It just shows you the board, the RAM speed, whether they're matched, will it boot, will it report the correct bytes, will it load anything, does it pass the diagnostics, and will it run R-type? And right off the bat, three out of five of those passed. This, I'm not going to labour the point, but I tried three PLAs on that board, and none of them, apart from the plankton, would pass the diagnostic test. Not even a real PLA, not even two real PLAs. So, yeah, three out of five passed with flying colours. And that was without messing around with the capacitance, without doing anything. One out of the, one of the boards um, almost passed. One of the boards, you know, it would it would boot it would show the correct bytes free it would load some things from ST to IEC but it wouldn't pass the diagnostics I reckon it would have done if I had the tools and the wherewithal to mess around with the capacitance but bear in mind I'm, I'm using parts out of the parts bin here I'm, you know uh, and I'm implying accuracy I'm putting together three fairly lumpy values capacitors anything I've got in a drawer and then trying to get it as close to 68 or 70 odd picofarads and then measuring it on a seven dollar tester so it's a pretty lumpy you know it's not a very accurate capacitance that I'm putting on that pin so it may be possible if you've got the time and the energy and the inclination to actually get all of them working um, but in my particular unscientific tests three work three out of five worked off the bat one almost worked sorry one almost worked and one was a bit of a non-starter interestingly enough the one that was a bit of a non-starter had mismatched RAM same speed but different brands of chips if you want to watch a video on you know the plankton which I incidentally think is an awesome piece of kit a lot of effort a lot of research gone into it 15 quid frankly I don't think you can go wrong for that that seems like a really really good product I've got two and I wouldn't have two if I didn't think they were great I think these are also great I think these work so I'm not going to get into a, a, a debate about whether using these is going to wear your machine down over time, whether it's a good idea. Frankly, I don't know enough about it. There are other better people that know more about it than me. All I can tell you is, in my little unex unscientific tests, those were the results. My own personal opinion, I've got two of these and I'm going to use them. I'm also going to keep these because these work. Um, so that's just my two cents. Um, and my little unscientific experiment and I hope you found that interesting and I'll see you all later. Cheers.